welcome again to the big match and a chance in the next hour or so to forget the watery weekend we've been having in the south of England at any rate and enjoy some fine action from three first division games. Our main match comes from Stamford Bridge and is newly promoted Chelsea against Coventry City. We support that one with Nottingham Forest against Derby County, Brian Clough's old team against his new one and from the North East, Middlesbrough against Newcastle United. First, let's make a start with the action as we go off to West London for Chelsea against Coventry City. And here's Ken Shelito, the new Chelsea manager who rose through the ranks, Chelsea player, youth manager, and now a man at the top. One decision he's had to make this season is about his goalkeeper. It's John Phillips who's got the job again in preference to Peter Bonetti. Good week for him because he's also forced his way into the Welsh World Cup squad. Opposing him today, the Welsh skipper Terry Yorath, also an inspiring midfield captain of the Coventry side. The two teams then, Chelsea unchanged after a 2-0 victory here against Birmingham City. And uh, Ron Harris, the sole survivor of the old school. Coventry also unchanged, the third successive match. The referee Derek Nippard, and he's getting the game away now, with Coventry City attacking the goal to our left. They are in an all-red strip, and uh, apologies to any of you watching in black and white if you're having a bit of trouble. Coventry, in fact, will have those white facings down their shirts and shorts. Chelsea in a strip of all blue with white stockings. That should help you too. Good jump there straight away by uh, Gary Stanley. The ball played back by Bobby McDonald to goalkeeper Jim Blythe, who was doubtful this week. He had a bit of a calf injury. Harris versus Wallace. This Wallace getting the header hat to Tom Hutchison. Interesting looking cross. Braden's come up on the far side, and my goodness, that was Wallace just over the bar. That was a very good break by Coventry. A lazy looking cross there from big Tom Hutchison, and a very good leap on the far side by Mick Ferguson, and he was in like a flash, Ian Wallace, but just a little too high. throw Ray Graydon Yorath scoop forward to Ferguson Wilkins and now Gary Locke Langley hoping to get in behind the defence there and indeed has done so very well and Blythe had to get down quickly before Finiston came in great turn of speed there by young Tommy Langley Got in well behind that Coventry defence, and with a little room to spare, still got across quite a dangerous-looking centre. It's a Coventry throw. May have been a little unlucky there because uh, it looked to me an accidental handball as he was trying to regain his balance but uh, referee Derek Nippard has given this free kick to Coventry could be in a dangerous position for Chelsea on this side of the penalty area Ferguson and Hutchison and Holton has come up Yorath with a little chip Ferguson with the header getting there just a fraction before Wicks he was a little more alive to it and he looks a very lively uh, striker indeed uh, Yorath just scooping that free kick and Ferguson just nodding it powerfully wide. Holton to Blythe. yet Burnton planting it forward finished him being well watched by Holton and Sparrow with the Chelsea throw Holton's header Wallace to Yorath Wilkins looking for a yard of space 
Finiston likewise. Wilkins. What about that for a ball? Stanley just dinking it in. And Coventry happy to get that away with Mick Pook's header going behind for the corner. What a ball, though, from uh, Ray Wilkins. Picking up Gary Stanley to perfection. Ray Wilkins with the corner. Steve Wicks up there again. Wicks with a header, but he couldn't get sufficiently above it. Hutchison's on his way, pushed back there, Powell turning the net, goal given. Barry Powell has put to Coventry ahead, but there's got to be a question mark about that push in the back by Mick Ferguson that gave Coventry possession just outside the box. From that, Tommy Hutchison went on, crossed it back from the byline, and Barry Powell has put Coventry into the lead with 25 minutes gone. Chelsea nil, Coventry City one. Coventry, who never beaten Chelsea here in nine visits, and indeed have only beaten them once, home or away in 18 visits, now go into the league. Chelsea, uh, for their part, maybe will need to be a little more aggressive and adventurous going up front. At the moment, they've been playing a 4 4 2, with just Langley and uh, Finiston, they're two front runners, and they're the only two that are up now. Maybe having one go down, they'll have to change that a little bit. Wilkins there for Chelsea. He really is the man with the ideas. What a nice flick there by Britain for Stanley. Crossed in again, and it comes off Holton for a corner. They really opened up Coventry there right to the last in the most brilliant fashion. The pass by Wilkins and the lovely flick by Britain doing most of the work. Britain then with the corner. He didn't lower this time and Coop knocking it away. Wilkins and Long. Sparrow. Wicks who'd gone up, here he is again, he stayed up there. Ferguson trying to check him. And Oki checking him, but only at the expense of a free kick. Well, in the last ten minutes of the first half, a good moment now for Chelsea to uh, look for an equaliser in a good position, really, now for them to be in with his free kick. Five men lying just on this side of the penalty area. Wilkins with it, scooping it in there. Finished him with a header, had it punched off his head, though, by Bly. And an offside, the commentary defenders coming out quicker than the Chelsea attackers could get back. Coventry throw. The goal scorer Barry Powell with it. Hutchison. Wallace trying to get the header in, but Harris was nicely placed behind him. Wilkins loses out here to Hutchison, scooped in once more towards Ferguson. There's his little nod down. Very unselfish uh, striker, Mick Ferguson. That's three or four times in this game he's got up well and instead of going for goal has tried to nod it down for somebody uh, coming in quickly. Got a good relationship, I would have thought, with Wallace. Langley on for Langley. 
No foul there. Yes. Holden went to sleep there for a moment, finished and got in. And here go Coventry with Carl. Coventry manager Gordon uh, Milne on the right of the picture there. Last five minutes of the first half, Coventry leading a goal to nil. Coop with the free kick. Ferguson again winning it in the air. Oh, a great chop and a turn there by Wallace and number two. A mistake really by Phillips. But again, the unselfish Ferguson getting up well, nodding it down. And what a tremendous shot on the turn there by young Ian Wallace. Got a feeling that uh, John Phillips will be annoyed for not quite grabbing that one. Back of the net. Chelsea nil, Coventry two. Scorer Ian Wallace from the Scottish under 21 squad, in fact, joined uh, Coventry City a year ago tomorrow from Dunbar. Ian Wallace. Oh, great, and got the better of Sparrow there. Wallace has gone out wide. Really uh, take up the best of positions. It wasn't a particularly good pass, though, by uh, Graydon. Coventry, who missed relegation last season by a single point and had to wait to the very last game of the season when they got a 2-2 against Bristol City for the point that meant safety. Not uh, in recent years, at any rate, one of the most powerful of first division sides, but here they are, two up on Chelsea. And Chelsea will be very disappointed about that. So we come into injury time at the end of the first half. He did the whistle goes now for half time. Barry Powell having put uh, Coventry ahead in controversial manner after it appeared that uh, Tom Hutchison had pushed uh, Gary Locke in the back. And then uh, again just before half time, uh, Ian Wallace turning superbly after a header down by Ferguson to make it 2 0. So a lot for Chelsea to aim for in the second half as we leave you just for a moment on the big match. Welcome back to Stamford Bridge as uh, Derek Nippar, the referee from Hampshire, gets the second half underway. Chelsea with a lot to do, those two goals down. Now attacking the goal to our left. They've got to push a lot more men forward than they uh, managed to do in the first half. Even at the uh, expense of taking a few risks at the back. Here's McDonald for Coventry. And a throw given to Coventry City. Chelsea will have two formidable games coming up in the next few days. Away to Liverpool in the League Cup and away to Ipswich in the Football League next Saturday. Well, that could have been a bit cheeky. It could have been a bit dangerous. In the end, it was quite safe. Bitten back to uh, Phillips. Yorath. Lewington, Yorath after him. Hutchison, nice bit of skill there. Here's Yorath. That's a tremendous influence on this Coventry side, Yorath. Parking himself just ahead of the back four. Organising everything forward and at the back, and here he is again, coming forward this time, but that wasn't such a good pass, straight to Stanley. 
Play on, said the referee. No foul. Oki with the cross. Ferguson straining to get the header in. Here's Hutchison. Oh, what a lovely bit of skill. What a goal kick. Tom Hutchison, the juggler. Finished its head. McDonald there, a four length. Covering each other well in the Coventry defence. Again by Graydon. Wallace on the end of it. Ferguson waiting in the middle. Hutchison coming in quickly as well. That's a little too close to the keeper, though. Oh. Chelsea's free kick. again forward now to Wallace again he's turned his man well again Ferguson's waiting in the middle that's a good cross and Ferguson's header well saved by Phillips nice bit of combination there on the right hand side of Coventry City's attack and what a lovely cross in there for Ferguson rising well at the far post and Phillips doing well to get down and grab it well, I suppose it's Ray Wilkins more than anybody that you would look to now. And, uh, I don't know whether he just had a trot across to the bench there. He came running from that direction. Whether he's got a word from uh, Ken Shelito or not, I don't know. Perhaps to uh, change one or two things around. Certainly in the 21 minutes that remain, Ken Shelito and Chelsea have got to find something. Well, here's Langley. Perhaps he'll find something. Stanley. Coventry have got a lot back. Oh, and he hit the post! Well, that was a terrible break for Chelsea, just when they wanted something uh, going their way. A good move, sweeping across to the left-hand side. Gary Stanley, a man with a powerful shot, hitting it hard and low, beating the keeper, but not the post. Coventry still leading 2-0. Oh, he was beaten for the ball there by Sparrow. Here's Langley. Free kick. And it's about uh, 27 yards, something like that. Yeah, and they make something of it. A great goal. Lewington's in there, Stanley's in there. Played there for Wilkins, hit beautifully, but straight at line. Very sweetly struck shot that by uh, Ray Wilkins, but uh, past the wall and straight at the keeper. And Lewington, he might fall for him, fly this right out, Langley, an open goal, and he scored! <laughs> well, the ball planted through there, suddenly had Coventry in trouble. Lewington, it seemed, might have a chance, and they didn't quite materialise for him, but the ball then found with Blythe stranded. It fell to Langley, 
And although there were a couple of Coventry defenders there, they couldn't stop it going into the box. Chelsea won, Coventry two. Tommy Langley. Well, that might give us quite a finish with 11 minutes to go. And Chelsea in search of a point now. Coventry, who for so long appeared in very little danger, might be made to waver a little bit. Here's Powell, and here's Yorath. The long cross to the far side towards Ferguson. Oh, and he's lost it! And Graydon has hammered it into the side netting with a whistle gone. A push on the keeper. Chelsea. so well for so long but now they're facing also a Chelsea side that can see a way of hope now can Lewington and Wilkins between them contrive something here Wilkins playing it off there for Stanley hit low and straight at the keeper well that's a free kick situation that Chelsea have employed before and they've employed it successfully before the touch that goes to Wilkins and then the touch on for Stanley at that time, straight at Jim Blythe. Wallace. Wade again. The manager Gordon Lewin saying before the game that his side have played well at Old Trafford and they lost to Manchester United. Well, they've got to play well from now on in, but they might. Well, oh, that one was uh, whacked over the top there by Tom Hutchison after some uh, really brilliant running there by Ian Wallace. Looked as though another opening was there for Coventry, and Hutchison might well regret that miss. Here's Stanley. Cannoned off uh, Coop, so if it goes behind, it's got to be a corner, and it is. Ray Wilkins will take it. Steve Wick saying, wait for me to get up. Britain running hard towards the near post, too high for him. Ferguson back there. Jumping with Wicks, it might get there yet, fisted away by Bly at that time. Lewington trying to turn it back, one of the commentary players flattened. Number 10, uh, Barry Powell. Well, Gordon has got to wait the last four minutes to see whether his side gets a win bonus. Side. It's going to be a free kick. Oh. That was thundering into the back of Wallace. That was wanting to get the ball quickly, and I think Wallace, given the chance, would have uh, prevented him from doing so. Coming towards injury time now. Coventry a matter of seconds away from their first ever win at Stamford Bridge. And I'm bound to say it's a win they deserve. Just wavered that little bit in the last 10 minutes. Although, uh, in fairness, Chelsea have not produced many sparkling attacks since they uh, pulled the game back to 2-1. Coventry, who escaped by a whisker last season, I think uh, would probably agree themselves. They're not one of the most powerful first division sides, but they've rarely looked in danger here. And really, it's a rather ominous sign, maybe, for Chelsea, who've just not been able to break them down. Chelsea already beaten once on the opening Saturday. They beat Birmingham 2 0 here. Looks very much as though they're going to be beaten here again this afternoon. Referee looking at both linesmen. Here's Hutchison. They'll just want to keep possession now for the remaining seconds. 
Hutchison playing it wide. That's the final whistle. And Coventry have won by two goals to one. It goes from uh, Barry Powell and Ian Wallace in the first half. There's Barry Powell. And Ian Wallace, and then, of course, 11 minutes from the end, Tommy Langley having scored uh, for Chelsea to give us just uh, a hope that there might be quite a flourish at the finish for Chelsea, but they were snuffed out of it yet again by Coventry City. And a final score then, which is Chelsea 1, Coventry 2. Well, a chance to meet now for the first time the new Chelsea manager. And I suggested to Ken Shelleter that to lose to a side that was struggling for most of last season was an ominous sign. What went wrong? Well, I think our passing was bad today. Um, and we didn't support our front men quick enough, which we've been working at. But uh, we just hope it'll come. Mm. What have you been talking about in the, in the dressing room at the moment? Well, we don't say much after the game. Um, it's better left till Monday. Then we can sit down and have a good chat and sort things out properly. Of course, a lot of people watching that would say that you didn't cause them enough problems because you only had two men up, Steve Finiston and Tommy Langley. Yes, that's right. Which uh, is unusual for a home side to play 4-4-2, isn't yes. it? Yes. Well, what we're trying to do, what we w want to try and achieve is that our flank midfield players become wingers so we can break in and hoping to come out as four attackers. But it's, it's a difficult system and um, we're trying to work at it. Mm. Birmingham, it worked quite well. Today, it, uh, it didn't work at all. Yeah. So you're looking for the likes what, of Gary Stanley and Ray Wilkins and Ray Lewington to, to be breaking forward, yeah. to, you know, to create more men up front. The other thing that I found a little surprising was Mickey Droy, the, the substitute. Yes. Um, because that's not going to give you much variation up front either, is it? If, if um, yes, it, it would do. Would it? Um, yes, we could push Ronnie Harris forward and Gary Stanley can go up front. It, uh, it does give us a variation. Yeah. What about the two goals that Coventry scored? There was something about the pair of them, really. The first one, it looked an obvious push um, on Gary Locke by Mick Ferguson. Yeah, well, they say it was a push. Um, but sitting in the dugout, I wouldn't argue. The, both of them were going for the ball, see Gary fall over, and within a couple of seconds, the ball was in our net. So I couldn't see. From where I was sitting, there was, I wouldn't make any comment, really, on that. But I can make a comment, and to me, it was a blatant push in the back. Gary Locke going for the ball. Look at Mick Ferguson coming up behind him. Whoosh, straight in the back. And look at the elbow, just finishing it off, and Gary Locke is sent sprawling. Now, Mick Ferguson, to his surprise, perhaps no whistle, and he finds the ball at his feet. A short pass to Tom Hutchison. Chelsea now are in disarray, and Coventry are poised for the kill. Beautifully played back there for Barry Powell. Ian Wallace claims that the goal was his. In fact, it does deflect off that little uh, red-haired forward. But you've got to give that goal, without doubt, to Barry Powell. Second goal was a uh, disappointing for, for us. We had four men doing nothing. And the fellow just... He turned quickly and got his shot in, but we didn't pressurise him at all. Mm. Do you think that the keeper had a blind spot there, or what? Possibly. But there again, from where I was sitting, it was difficult to see. Mm. But if, I think if we'd have pressurised uh, uh, Wallace, then um, his shot probably wouldn't have gone in. Yeah. A long free kick from Mick Coop, and Ferguson getting up so well as he did so often. There you can see the Chelsea players not really pressurising, as Ken Shelleto said, that uh, red-haired figure in the middle, Ian Wallace, doing nothing, in the words of their manager. Just giving him that extra yard or two, and just look at the use he makes of it. A brilliant shot on the turn. And maybe I was a little unfair on John Phillips. The ball bounces awkwardly in front of him. But I think on reflection, John might well feel I should have had that one. You lost two out of the first three, which is, which is never the sort of start any manager or no. any club wants. And with Chelsea, with their problems and so on, financially, you clearly need a, a hell of a good season. Uh, yes. you're, you're a lot more worried now than you were, say, a week ago? Um, I wouldn't say more worried. I was worried when they, they first asked me to take up the position. Yeah? Oh, yeah, it's... What worried you? Um, I don't know what worried me, really. Like, it's trying to emulate somebody else. You know, Eddie done a tremendous job. Um, then Eddie he McCready. Yes, mm. then he resigned. And um, the supporters are used to a bit of success. So that's it, a challenge. Yeah. You, I know you were very conscious of the inexperience in the side and, and you my, as well. My inexperience. And yours yes. as well, yeah. Oh, yes. In fact, the, the, the morning after the victory over Birmingham, I gather you had them back in training again, did you? Well, that's right. It's yeah. um, not for any other reason, but the more we can do, and the more we talk, mainly, yeah. do a lot of talking at the moment, 
um, the better it's going to be. Where do you feel your inexperience is? Because you've had a long time in the game as a Chelsea player, you won an England cap as well, you've, be, you've been with all these young lads as a youth manager, for example. Where do you feel you're inexperienced? Well, I think mainly my experience is, is changing a formation um, when things are going wrong. Um, sort of making those decisions, the same as the young players find. You know, making decisions for 90 minutes. And that's something I'll learn. I hope it's not the hard way, but uh, it's something else I shall learn. Do you think it's something you've got to learn very quickly in the light of the oh, last yes. few results? Yes, we've got to learn very quickly. I think I, you always suspend, uh, suspected, Ken, that it was going to be a tough job. Oh, you, yes. You've got no doubts now. Oh, no, I've got no doubts. It's, uh, I knew it was a tough job. Um, but I, it's my club. And uh, if I fail, well, I fail, you know, but... Um, it's a bit early to start talking about failure. Well... Yes, it is early to talk, uh, discussing success and failure, but, you know, it's something that you don't want to, you know, you just keep battling away. There's a lot of good sides we've got to play yet. Ken Shelito of Chelsea. And indeed, uh, Chelsea's next two games could not really be tougher. Away to Liverpool in the League Cup on Tuesday, what about that one? And then away to Ipswich in the First Division next Saturday. I think it's time for some more action now, and for this we go to the North East, for Middlesbrough, under their new manager John Neal, who of course has replaced Jackie Charlton, and Newcastle United. I should tell you that we had originally arranged to bring you Manchester United against Ipswich, but as you may have read in your paper, that one finished in a goalless draw. Uh, there'll be plenty of opportunities, I'm quite sure, to pick up those two fine sides later on in the season. And today we opted instead for the goals from Middlesbrough against Newcastle. I hope you agree with our change of plans as we join Martin Tyler and the Yorkshire cameras at Ayrson Park. So all the atmosphere of a real local derby here at Ayrson Park. Newcastle in their striped shirts playing from right to left against the Middlesbrough side under a new manager. And perhaps with a slightly different philosophy. And for Cassidy, through for Mickey Burns. Blocked, though, by Willie Madron. And Middlesbrough almost caught cold. Nicely laid through by Cassidy and Madron just getting a foot out. An extra aerial power with Graham Oates in the lineup coming in at the far post. And there is Oates going in. And it was scrambled away. And it looks as though... Has the referee given a penalty? We can watch as Oates goes in. Was it a push on him? Or was it handled on the line? But the decision is a penalty kick. With just seconds gone. A sensational beginning at Ayrson Park. Well, what a start for Jim Platt. On the wrong end now of a penalty which Tommy Craig will take. So Craig against Platt, and Platt saves it. So the sensation takes another turn. Driven by Craig, and Platt went the right way and pushed it out. got a dog on the field as well to add to this quite unusual beginning to a first division game. The referee saying play on. There's the intruder. And I suppose it's quite appropriate that Billy Woof is chasing through. And surely play will have to be stopped doing more tackling at the moment than any of the Middlesbrough players. And Tommy Cassidy, who could only surely have been saying to the referee, hold up play while we get the dog off the field, being told off for his comments. Down the tunnel for an early bath, perhaps. Nicely on for Woof. Great push by John Bird. Bags wanting to take it quickly, but finding that players were still positioning themselves. 
Hamilton towards Mills. Now, will that fall for Armstrong? Yes! David Armstrong. Came from the free kick. Cracks had delayed to make sure everyone was in position. And the knockdown came to David Armstrong, who swung a left foot. The goalkeeper may well have been unsighted. Played for Cooper. Obstructed right on the edge of the area by McCaffrey. Cooper, a player with just the sort of skill to exploit that situation. Brought down. are up and it's driven and it's gone in from Armstrong as everyone was expecting the cross Hardwick could only help it in the decision was a direct free kick the two-man wall and it didn't help the goalkeeper who could only push it in from David Armstrong who gets his second goal 2-0 to Middlesbrough. Our last match today brings us to the first division game that promised to have more bite and meaning to it, I suppose, than any other played yesterday, and so it proved. Nottingham Forest, fresh up from the second division and winners of their first two games against Derby County, just a few miles up the motorway. One point from their first couple of games. But, of course, what made it more of a headline maker was that it brought together the side Brian Clough is so successfully building at Nottingham against the club he left at Derby. A crowd of 28,000 at the city ground Nottingham. ATV's cameras were there as well with commentator Hugh Johns. Nottingham Forest are in the dark shirts. John Robertson. Ball in for Woodcock. Such a starlet in this Forest side last season. He really broke through. Robertson. Probably the best season he ever had for the club last season. As the left foot in, the neck on for Boyer. The punch out by Bolton. Knocked away by Daly, but the pressure's still on. It's Anderson. Well, there was excitement in the very first seconds of the game. A cross in from Robertson. The neck on by Boyer, and Bolton stretching as he managed to pump it away. Todd now. Tails with Burns. Oh, we've had half an hour's football, no goals to show for it. That's a fine ball from Todd. Picking up Nish, although Anderson is going over there hard and fast. Fullback did use his speed then. It's O'Neill. It's on to with. O'Neill going outside with. O'Neill again. And the cross hits McFarlane. Might have taken a little bit more time over that cross ball, I think, Martin O'Neill then. Woodcock has gone over to take the uh, corner. Ken Burns is in the box with Larry Lloyd. There's plenty of height there. Lloyd was in. And Wood drives it. And Wood scores it. up his goal again record. Everton, Bristol City and now Derby County. Forest fans salute him. Woodcock's corner swinging in the big figure of Larry Lloyd unsettling Derby as he comes back to Peter with dramatic drive to Bolton's right. Clark, Robertson, flick in beautiful one for Woodcock Todd at his back needs help Robertson tacks and does Webster good looking cross with took it on his chest instead of his head jumped badly for him 
good bit of play by Robertson, the wing play. Skin Webster crossed a good ball, but it didn't didn't come high enough, in fact, for Will to head. Took it on his chest. Rather fortunate that uh, Derby find themselves still only one goal down. One for Woodcock to chase. And golly, that boy can go. Really can go. Oh, what a superb bit of football by another good youngster. Gave the ball away. O'Neill. Robertson coming in with number two. electrifying piece of football I've seen for a long time and Woodcock is getting a lot of the praise because he played a tremendous part in it. Two nothing. The electrifying speed of Woodcock dashing away with the ball. A superb tackle back by Langer. Lost the ball. O'Neill to the far post. Robertson crosses it in and with the easiest goal he'll ever score. Well won back by Hales. Well positioned, Clark. Gemmell fighting as he has from start to finish for Derby. And here's Woodcock again. Taking on Todd. Cheeky enough to do it. And a fine ball across to Robertson. And on for Peter Will. Woodcock. Bowyer. And no shot for Bolton to save, but he had an anxious moment then. Hughes. Nish now. Gemmell. Webster. It's Hector. That looks good. Again, Hector showing what Derby desperately need. Shots on target. At least they're trying on this for this half. Though I can't really remember John Middleton having a positive save to make. Webster's head. Robertson again. Woodcock. McGovern. Didn't quite find a nail. Yes, he did. Here's Anderson. He's got the bit between his teeth now. Comes O'Neill against Langan. And Nish in support. Comes to Anderson. O'Neill looking for the cross in. Woodcock was looking for a bolt to drop it. And Hector comes away for Derby. Burns, well cut out ball. Gemmell did tremendously well, and he's hurt in the process. Now it's Hughes. Daly, bad ball. Committed uh, Webster. And in fact, it's Robertson, McGovern calling for it. For Clark. McGovern, Clark, with, he's all right, they look for offside, and he wasn't, with, oh, and it was just so close. Bolton a bit cross with the defence, with, a little angry for, with himself, I think. Good ball in for Hector, dummy, but nobody bought it. With, O'Neill. Anderson offering himself again. And it's always behind O'Neill, ready to help out. Burns can go for McGovern if he wants to, but decides to go forward. Anderson. O'Neill. Anderson again. Good line ball for Will. 
replaced by Powell. O'Neill through. Slips away from them. Looks for Woodcock, comes across now for Robertson. Goal number three, John Robertson. 33 minutes into the second half. John Robertson twisting the knife in the gaping wounds that Forrest have inflicted on Derby. All starting on the right side with that superb little bit of football that let O'Neill free. And the ball came across the box. Robertson fought for it, got it, and tucked it away. And so it is that Nottingham Forest are now the only first division side still with a 100% record. And London clubs have their opportunity of pitting themselves against Forest in the next week. West Ham go to Nottingham for the League Cup tie on Tuesday. And then Forest come down to Highbury to play Arsenal next Saturday. Well, no doubt who they're all talking about this weekend with his Nottingham Forest side really playing some lovely stuff. It's Brian Clough. With Peter Taylor alongside him, they've brought success and smiles to Nottingham. Boyd was in, and Wood drives it, and Wood scores it. Robertson coming in, with number two. Comes across now for Robertson. Goal number three, John Robertson.